What is up? Apex Reaper here. Playing more of the dwarfs. And now, I finally get to complete the quest. Let's do it! After a march through the thick pine forest, Black Saddle, the sinister tabletop mountain, and your journey's destination rises up before you. Whoa. Are you sure that the Famulus lives here? Yes, according to Lot Yonan. Although you try to put a lot of assurance into your voice, you too see no signs that anyone lives here. No castle, no tunnel, no camp. There's nothing here but mountain. Then we'll have to take a closer look. You do that, scholar. We'll be waiting for you here. You think about objecting, but it would just be a waste of breath. Cool. I get to go around and explore. Can I talk to you? No, I don't want to talk to you guys. You guys suck. Not really. I mean, you're really freaking fast. You're a tank. But where's your sense of adventure? Look at the forest. Even the dark, evergreen forest seems to be afraid of the Black Mountain. Huh. Man, I don't want to miss anything. Oh, this is so freaking cool. What's that? Hmm. No trace of Guren here either. If he's close, then there must be some kind of cave somewhere in the mountain. I think I see the cave. It's right here in front of us. Look at the crack. I can only climb a little way here. Ah, there must be a better way. Wait, I hear something. Dark forest, creepy as all hell. There must be undead. An old tree. Looks like it could fall down at any moment. Well, push it. Yeah. There we go. Oh, yeah. Twenty-five experience? Too steep. I can't get a grip anywhere. Try to scale the rock face. Yeah, let's do it. I should be able to get up here. Don't fall, little guy. Oh, oh. Phew. That was close. Can you do it again? I hope this is all worth it. I'm going without my allies. It feels wrong. Here's a... No, forget it. What? It's a tree. Definitely... a rock face. <laughs> Good job. Look at this one. There's something engraved on it. Oh, cool. <laughs> you realize with surprise that they are runes in the Dwarven language. Read the runes. Built with the blood of our enemies, be unyielding as the rock, and soak the land in their blood. Huh? Sweet. Ahem. <clears throat> Hello. Hello. Is that a puzzle? Do we have a puzzle to solve? This is awesome. Wow, this looks so cool. Kind of wish we had a torch. Just for, you know, how cool it would look, torch light and all. But it's all good. Look at the pool of light. Sure. Master Garen! 
Lot Yonan sent me to bring some items back to you. My inquiries are almost at an end. That means I can finally go to be with my sunshine. I have never been to Greenglade, but I think I will like it there. I deposited my most valuable things in the grave of Horangarth before my departure and secured it with magic. The password is... You recognize the following words as rune names, but they're written in the learned language, so you don't know which they are. <sighs> Greenglade. Oh, great. Ah, take the lamp. Useful. An eternal flame. I know who taught him that. Examine the work. You see sketches and notes on the architectural features, statues, and wall reliefs. It seems Garen spent a lot of time studying this place. Maybe he's kind of a, a dwarf historian, or maybe he's just a treasure hunter. Stop me. What's that? Hello? Is, is anyone there? You got food. It looks as though Garen lived in the fortress for a while. It also seems that he left several lunar orbits ago. Uh, yeah, take the food, man. It's not stealing. It would just be a shame if the provisions went off. Light the bazaar. Or whatever you want to call that. Cool. Be a fire. Light them all. What? Ooh, look at the weapons. A series of weapons that are all clearly of dwarven origin. The spider webs and rust suggest they have been here for quite a while. Maybe even centuries. Well, no use to us. I like this one. Yeah, yeah. Oh, there's a path. I do not want to go on the path yet. What was that? Must be a graphical glitch. Because technically that's behind a wall. Born of stone, forged in battle. Arise, reborn from the blood of the enemy. You're not sure if you really want to know what was once in this basin. The whole place gives you the feeling that a decent dwarf shouldn't hang around too long. Yeah, good thing we're not decent. Look at that sarcophagus. A sarcophagus. Perhaps I could open it. Light the runes? What? A rune. Clearly magical. Ooh. Okay, so there's an order. This one? Then... Oh, we didn't save it. This one? So you're the first one. Okay. Is there any similarities anywhere? I didn't... See... Oh, wait. I see it. Wait, no. Is that a clue? Or is that just something hanging there? Huh. I don't know. We're going to have to randomly guess. Okay. That one is going to split to this one. Why? No idea. Did I do it? No. Okay. No, 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 no. It's some bitch. So, this one. Then this one? Ah, uh, I guess this one. I wanted the other one. Nope. Alright, 
This won't take too long. I don't know. Why you gotta hide like that? So that one. Then this one. This one? Nope. Alright. Now we know it. I wonder if they gave a clue somewhere. And I wasn't paying attention. Or I just missed it. Open sesame. Ooh. Ah! That's it! What do I get? What do I get? Garen's most valuable belongings. Letters from his lover, a silk scarf that must have belonged to her, and a uh, medallion. Take the medallion. What is it? Increase the damage of special attacks by 20%. Well, I'm right here. Small healing. Why does it disappear like that? I don't know. That's good. Cool. Now I think everything here is done. There's no special stuff to open up that one. Let's go in here. Oh, stars. Oh, well, they can go in the stairs. Or not. Use the stairs, man! They're right there. You can do it! They're right there! Nope. It's impossible. It's impossible to use the stars. Am I missing something? Let's look over here again. Light the camera. There we go. Guren is in Greenglade to visit his sunshine. Greenglade is in Galragar. We can't have fallen in love with a pointy ear, can he? Hey, don't be racist. Alright, I guess we leave. Graves. We could be buried here. Do you want to find out? I don't want to leave. Oh, I found something. Ooh. The third is the fortress belongs. It belongs to the dwarf haters. What a dick. Lorimber's dwarves are not only as unyielding as a mountain, they are also as destructive as an avalanche, and would batter into lesser kingdoms just as relentlessly. The four should find no salvation in Vrakus, only eternal damnation, so that they suffer indescribable torment between the worlds. You have heard of the dwarf haters. But this is the first time you have read their hateful words. You feel sick and turn away. Oh, I really don't like this mage anymore. He's a dwarf hater. What a jerk. Okay, oh, ooh, walk up the stairs. Ooh, what is this? Ooh, is that a shiny thing over there? Something over there. It's an altar. It would seem that even the thirdlings worship Vracus, but in all the other kingdoms his shrine would be the biggest, not the statue of the kingdom's progenitor. 
A couple of gold coins are in the bowl in front of the shrine. Wow, now that's a decision. You know what? Let's make an offering. He is our god, after all. Can't do any harm. Really? Ooh. Lorimber, the progenitor of the Thirdlings. In most of the chronicles about the five dwarfen kingdoms, only very little is written about the Thirdlings, and what is written is full of disgust. They are called traitors, or worse. Really? That's it? Oh, come on. I should have taken the gold. It's all good. Found out I really don't like this mage. He's a dick. He's a dwarven hater. A dwarven dwarf hater? I don't know. Alright. I think that is it. So now we have to climb all the way back down? Yep. Wait, am I all the way, all the way back down? Where am I? Yeah, we're here back at the brothers, the tweens. Let's talk to the tweens. So, scholar. What are the results of your inquiries? There is an abandoned fortress in the mountain, and I think it belonged to the Thirdlings. Boindil's eyes narrow. The blasted dwarf killers! A Thirdling fortress? Here? In the middle of Girdlegard? We must let High King Gundrabur know about this. The fortress has been long abandoned by the looks of it. Anyway, I can't go to Ogre's death until I have completed my quest. Goren is in Greenglade. Huh. Yeah, that's the king. The High King. Why do you want to bring me to him? <sighs> All right, then. It's about the choice of the new High King. Dandagar, the king of the Fourthlings, is with his entourage in Ogre's death and is supposed to ascend the throne. But our acting High King, Gundrabur, wants to prevent that from happening. He fears that Dandagar wishes to instigate a war against the Elves. But what have I got to do with that? Boindil is about to say something, but is silenced by a nudge in the side from his brother. High King Gundrabur will explain everything when the time comes. You look distrustfully from one twin to the other. Boindil has donned an innocent expression, and Boendal doesn't give you the impression that he has anything else to say on the matter. A thirdling fortress? Here, in the heart of Girdlegard. That's... that's strange, isn't it? And worrying. But they've always been wily. They move in the shadows and kill there too if they can. Do you know their story? I've read about it. Lorenberg, their progenitor, rejected the name that Vrakas gave him, who in turn did not give him any special talent, so his kingdom studied war. It helps them defending the East, but it also meant they ended up confronting the other kingdoms. No dwarf would ever even think of injuring one of his kind, never mind killing them. But the dwarf killers are proud of it. When they were even more powerful, they wanted to become the rulers of all dwarves. They are envious of our skills. They haven't been heard of for a long time, but you can be sure there isn't a single dwarf alive who doesn't hate them. What does this King Gandagar have against the Elves? Dwarves and Elves just don't get along. Brachus and Satalia made us that way. I know that, but, but going to war for just that after all this time? Well, there must be more behind it. They say that the King of the Fourthlings is full of hatred and is a hothead in this matter. Whatever, your High King must wait. I have a quest to carry out in Greenglade. 
But our quest is... Boindil raises a placatory hand and throws his rucksack onto his back in preparation. Let it be, dear brother. Look at him. He has made his decision, and you will not be able to change his stubborn dwarven mind. You can't help but smile. All right. Now we're supposed to go way up here? Okay. Well, I want to make a detour over there. What's my best way? Come back through Steepleton? And the tavern, I guess? Yeah, because then I can hit this little village here, see if there's anything there. Then go up here, and well, Dwarf Merchant will be gone by then. And then hit there, go through here, here. Yeah, alright. Sounds good. Traces of the attack on Steepleton can still be seen, but the repair work is coming on well. Good. While taking a rest, you see a car trundling along the road not far away from you. A young couple are sitting on the box seat, clearly in love and more interested in each other than the rest of the world around them. The sight reminds you of a long, unanswered question. So, I was uh, wondering, what do female dwarves look like? Pretty! Very pretty! Aha! Uh -huh. You were expecting a little more information. Uh, do they have beards? No. No, I would say it's more like... Like fluff. Oh, very attractive. And, uh, and what do they do? I mean, are they warriors too? In our kingdom, most take care of domestic life. They take the animals down to the meadows in the valleys, make sure the larders are full and that there's plenty of good beer, and make our clothes. It only ever causes problems when men and women stand shoulder to shoulder in battle. Some of them are talented stonemasons and smiths, and beware of insulting their skills. They are no less proud than we are. Interesting. Once again, you reach the crossroads and the Stone Sheep Tavern. Fuck this tavern. Come on. You walk to the nearest empty table with the twins in tow and sit down. The landlord comes. Okay. We're on our way. Despite. What's that little village there? Nothing. And this is. Falston? You arrive at a small, bustling village. One thing is clearly missing from the lively scene. The sound of metal on metal from the village smithy that would normally be heard above everything else at this time of day. A dour, grim-looking man is sitting in front of the forge with his right arm in a sling. His expression brightens as he sees you and he jumps to his feet. Dear dwarves, could I interest you in helping me in my workshop for a day? The man's expression is somewhere between desperation and hope. As you don't answer immediately, he continues. You will, of course, be royally rewarded for your work. I can offer you 100 gold pieces. What happened to your arm? What happened to your arm? A stupid accident. A box of blanks fell down. I was trying to catch it. It will heal, fortunately, but I won't be able to wield my hammer for a while. You must have quite a backlog of work. You nod sympathetically. You always felt bad if you were ill or couldn't work in the forge for some reason or other. Loads. But if what I hear about the metal working skills of the dwarves is true, it will be easy for you to manage it in a day. Yeah, let's help. I'll help you. I worked in a forge for a while. You modestly conceal that, in this case, a while means almost a whole human lifetime. A little later, you are standing in the workshop, examining the smith's inferior tools, while he fires up the forge and prepares everything for the job, as well as he can, with just one good arm. You weren't able to persuade the twins to help you, 
As warriors, they'd rather go hunting, Boindil declared. But you think it's more probable that you'll find them drinking beer. But you don't care. You're excited about being able to smith again after such a long time. Hours later, you have forgotten everything around you. The heat of the forge, the sweat on your warm skin, the play of the flames. You're in your element and work as if in a trance. The smith left the workshop ages ago with a satisfied grin on his face. Oi, I'm talking to you. You look up in surprise. Everything but the beating of the hammer had ceased to exist, and you didn't notice that someone has come in. Can you do it? You immediately dislike the middle-aged man. He sounds you out so doggedly with his light grey eyes that it feels as though he wants to look right through you and into your deepest thoughts. The man points to two horses. Those two, in one hour. Yeah, I would imagine he's talking about putting shoes on. Yeah. These two need shoeing. Oh. No problem. The man doesn't look convinced, but you get to work with confidence after examining the horse's hooves. Two more armed men are standing next to the horses, sizing you up. Let's talk to him. We don't back down. So, you're mercenaries, I take it. You're only trying to engage in conversation, but the man looks at you incredulously as if he didn't expect dwarves to be able to talk. Uh, something like that. Got lots of work? Oh, do you know anything about the armies of orcs from the south? We can't complain. The man's tone makes it clear that the conversation has ended here. You carry out the work in silence. As the leader of the mercenaries pays you, you have the feeling that he is trying to transfix you with his eyes. The men leave the workshop without a word. Hmm. Maybe we should follow him, see what he's got to say. Yeah, the men him. join a larger group of horsemen, more than a dozen, outside the village. You stay hidden and listen. Not here in the village. Go. Search the road between here and Clintal again. The other mercenaries nod and the group rides off. You can't make head nor tail of what's going on here, but you don't like it. You tell the twins about your encounter and they decide to be especially vigilant over the next days. You spend the night in the smith's house and move on the next morning. That's it. Can we actually reach him? Yeah, we can in reach him. In the early evening, you make an unusual discovery on the side of the road. A colorful trader's wagon has been carelessly abandoned with not a soul in sight. I don't like the look of this one bit, Boindil. You take a look around there, I'll stay on this side. Tungdil, you check the surrounding area, and be careful. Let's take a look around. You scan the road and the woods on both sides. Apart from the twins who are fighting their way through the undergrowth within earshot, you can't hear or see anyone. Look at the wagon. The wagon itself isn't damaged, nor is the drawbar. But the belts and leashes that normally hold the draft animals have been cut clean through. Oh no. We got any tracks? You can see a lot of tracks in the mud around the wagon. Hoof prints and footprints from humans in heavy boots. At least half a dozen long ones must have approached the wagon from the woods on both sides. Center the wagon. The dwindling daylight provides little light inside the wagon. It smells of leather, spices, and candles. And there's another smell in the air, which you can't quite place. It reminds you of your forge in Lot Yonan's vaults, but different. It is messy, but no more so than you would expect from a single dwarf. The bed is rumpled, and there are tools and leftover materials piled up on the little workbench. There are several cupboards hanging on the right-hand wall. At the end of the wagon, there's a large wardrobe, and next to the door on the left is a heavy wooden chest with rusty metal hinges. 
What's in the the smaller cupboards are piled high with a multitude of tins and boxes, all filled with odds and ends that the trader offered for sale to customers on his trips. Nothing of real interest. Okay. What's you reach wardrobe? for the knob of the wardrobe and then stop. The rug in front of the wardrobe squelches as you step on it, as if you had stepped in a puddle. You try to work out what has soaked the rug, when suddenly the door of the wardrobe springs open and something bounces into you. You take a step back, and the realization of what hits you makes you take two more. Lying on the floor in front of you is the body of a dwarf, headless. What? His head has been cut clean from his neck. The dwarf is wearing clothes that look more like human robes and bears no coat of arms that would identify his kingdom. You didn't know him, but no one deserves to die like this. Ah, uh, let's look at him. His head has been cut off cleanly, probably with a sharp blade. A quick glance in the wardrobe confirms what you already suspect. The dwarf's head is nowhere to be seen. We must find them. As the you try to lift the lid of the chest, you realize that the lock has been broken out of the wood. You open the lid and look inside. Amongst clothes and some empty boxes, you find a loot case and a beautiful loot of the kind that humans build, as well as a bag of bread and cured meat. Take the loot. You take the loot. You can't play, but an instrument like this is worth good gold. And let's take the food. You take the bread and the cured meat. The extra provisions should keep you going for a few days. And let's get this wagon. Hopefully, kill those motherfuckers who killed our d dwarf dude. Of course, tell the twins. You give a short, sharp whistle, and the twins come running at the double. You tell them what you found. A group of horsemen with heavy boots has been here. I found Mort in the wagon. Beheaded. I have a hunch that the mercenaries from Fallowrock have something to do with this. Wretched dwarf killers! You can tell that Boindil wants revenge and can understand his feelings well. You wrap the body in linen, dig a hole in the woods and place the body in it. You lay a couple of his tools and other personal belongings you found in the wagon next to him. You wish there was more you could do for him. You continue on your journey in gloomy spirits. Oh, level five. What are you doing? What's this? I'm not gonna tell. Do they? What place did they say that was? Oh, if I find them, they're dead though. Oh, they are so dead. Not gonna tell me what that is. Alright, well, that is all the time we have for this episode. If you liked the episode, hit that thumbs up button, show your support. If you're new and you haven't, subscribe for more content. And until next time, I'm Apex Reaper. You all stay positive. Thanks for watching.